This video sucks. It absolutely sucks. I still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I gotta get some of that NASCAR tape. I had to weld that on. That tape just don't work. Great, we're learning shit. This is really, I don't know, I'm, I'm impressed with myself and I got low standards. All right, mini truckers. Welcome back to the dirty garage. It's been a minute. Some things happened personally. Not that anyone cares. I can hardly stand myself. I have a problem. This is in here. I don't want to be pulling on the chrome trim all the time, you know what I mean? It's a lot easier to have access to kind of push it, all right? But obviously, we're gonna weld this in here. So how do you get to it? But it'd be nice if there was an access hole here, push it out. You do not want that open to the elements because you'll get water in there, right? Makes sense? Everybody following? Good. So I got something off of that Rainforest website. These little plugs. And they're just plastic. You can just cut a hole and plug it in. Sounds good, right? Let's do that. Now them fold it to the edge, off like that. Be able to find that edge with a marker real easy. Do that. It's actually pretty straight. Take yourself a little drill bit. And we're gonna go just to the inside corners and then you're gonna end up what I have over there. So I got the holes drilled here. You're gonna get as close as I can with a cutoff wheel. We'll be in here with a grinder getting into the proper shape so this plug fits in there. Smooth like Captain Crunch. I could only cut in so far because the diameter of the blade would start nicking outside of here. You gotta grind out a little bit, but that's good. That's just good job. My German is as good as my Spanish, and I love me some tortillas. Well, it's like fitting the taillights. This is going to be a lot of trimming, checking, trimming, and checking. All right, getting close here. So we have this part in, but we have these ribs. I could probably put a grinder to it, but you know, I can't get in that far here. You're kind of limited at how much you can actually get in there, so. Could I do up something like this that gets in there? It's not really doing me any favors. This would really help in this area here, but the problem is hazard fraud, two horsepower, five gallon, just ain't up to that task. So it's zap, let it catch up, zip, 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 let it catch up. So always use a grinder that you get to the edge and you kind of catch that and it bounces all over the place. But files, although boring and tedious, you're more controlled. You can get what's called a rat tail. They come in different sizes. So you have flat on one side, rounded on the other. That's nice for making a radius about that size. You can just get flat ones. They come larger, more aggressive. This one's more of a finishing. It's got finer teeth on it. Back to filing, not gonna video it, and away we go. All right, so after some very tedious massaging, I finally have proper size. It's a little rough going in, which is fine. It's in there nice and tight. But if water does get in there, all it's gonna do is run down here and into there and drain out. Um, there's primer in there, so I'm gonna paint that up. I'm gonna do the same thing to there. Take that painter's tape. Slap that right on here. Shoot primer from the back side.
take that off and then use an exacto cut out that exact shape. Line out where this is supposed to go. More primer to give us that outline. Peel that off. So the next issue is the problem where the tailgate cable attaches through this. And when you put this on there, on this side, this nut is in the way of where that bucket goes. So what's a fella to do? So I reached out to a group, Hardcore S10, and got a reply from a very nice gentleman by the name of Ryan Michaels who told me just to weld it on there. So, I'm about halfway shooting this video. There was a comment from a viewer named Aaron pointed out that I did not accommodate for the thickness of paint, primer paint, and clear coat, and probably any kind of Bondo. I can see kind of what he's talking about, scraping the paint every time you're dropping the taillight in and out. So, and that was something I was worried about. Um, since we're only a couple of tacks in, let's cut her out. So close yet so far away. So you'll have to excuse the fan noise, it's getting a little stuffy in here and it's 84 degrees. So anyway, just a couple tacks, got that back out. Special thanks for this tip. I'm glad that it came before this was fully welded in. Um, thanks for watching and correcting me. So like I said, I'm not a professional at this. If you want it professionally done, bring it to a body shop, custom shop, etc., etc. This is how we learn though and it's okay to make mistakes. I wanna play around with this one first before I get to cutting this one because the less I have to grind off, the better. So, so we're gonna to have to cut this weld here. Probably that weld there, that weld there. This has to go, we'll make that cut. And then obviously we're gonna to have to cut that weld there, that weld there, that weld there. And I want to leave this one so this doesn't curl out that way. That was fairly easy. Basically, you need to widen that out a little bit. This way, you got a lot of there. So at least we don't have to cut that and go that way according to someone on the internet that knows a heck of a lot more than I do. 
on a thing that I've never done. And that's not a knock. I do appreciate it. But we need to throw paint stick there. It's a pretty significant difference. That's quite a gap. About the thickness of a wooden stir stick. The gap difference right there. It's it's a little extreme because I got this side pinched, but you get you get the point. And tip for young newbies. Got a gap like this. A couple options here. First thing you can do is find yourself a rod. You can stick a rod in here. Close hanger rod kind of works to kind of bridge the gap so when you weld it actually becomes part of the weld. Another trick is to get yourself a chunk of brass. Where can you get a chunk of brass like this? Well this one I got from the McGreen and Gold website. They have a masterful website, ends with a car, uh, if you smell what I'm stepping in. Anyway, so you can buy a chunk of this from there but you, you can see when you weld that's where the weld is. You cannot weld brass. I got their brass bar in there and I welded right here. That's clamped in. Just like that. Gives you a really crappy looking weld on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. But does not protrude very far. So this is something you can get the, one of those miniature belt grinders and kind of get in there and, and clean that part up. But I'm gonna let this cool off and then we're gonna test fit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the, on the one that I already painted. And I'm not gonna record that because uh, I'm gonna have a bunch of fans and windows open, doors open to clear the, uh, fumes and it's just going to be nasty so okay so i got this actually chopped and widened up this goes in okay but then i noticed that where i had trimmed was wrong i, I think i got a little crazy cutting off thinking i knew where it was going to be like i said in my first video go slow it's easier to take off metal than to put it on and i actually added some metal starting to make the curve here. I need to add a little piece in here still, but just coming in here, grinding, massaging, you know, using my anvil horn and different body tools to get the curve just right. It, it feels right when I put it on there. Who knows what happens after it welds, but I did use some thicker 16 gauge to wrap this corner because I know there's gonna be a whole lot of shaping and heat. So I prepared for that. And honestly, this is probably gonna require some Bondo and probably gonna end up looking like crap. But anyway, I gotta take a break. Gotta put the kids to bed. Gotta grab a adult cold snack of the um, ribbon variety. Make up this piece, get some other stuff done and keep moving forward. So in conclusion, we got this in here. Thanks to Aaron, we all learned to widen this out. So the tail light goes in a hell of a lot easier. She drops right in. Looks nice. That's why um, that's why we read the comments and we don't we, uh, we we put away the ego and we don't know everything. I don't know everything. I told everybody that. I told you guys that numerous times. I said, if you want this done professionally, take it to a body shop. So we're all learning here, right? This is an $1,800 truck. These are $100 tail lamps that if uh, I totally botched this whole thing, I could just resell them. And I'm gonna be off on to um, really brush up on uh, sheet metal fab and basic bodywork stuff. My bodywork sucks. So I'm not even gonna record a video because the last thing I need to be doing is taking my ignorance and pissing into the pool and wealth of knowledge that is social media and whatever. But anyway, I'm gonna be watching videos that 
you guys are probably gonna watch. And for me, just to regurgitate somebody else's stuff just doesn't work. You ever play a telephone game? All right, mini truckers, I'm gonna wrap up part two right here. If you're to this point, thank you very much for watching. Till then, keep on mini trucking, keep her dirty. All right, latest.